Hello and welcome to the NBS Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. You know what makes me laugh? The pain and suffering of others from my puns. <laughs> I see. And also joining us today is Totera. Now you see, they might suffer in your puns, and you will always have the last laugh. Yeah. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> Oh, boys. So, anywho, in today's episode review, we are going to review Season 9, Episode 14, The Last Laugh. In this episode, when Pinkie Pie seeks help from her old friend Cheese Sandwich in finding her life's purpose, she discovers the... Un- me- me- how do you say that word, Silva? Unimaginable? Oh, yeah, unimaginable. This- she discovers the unimaginable has happened. Yes. So before we head into the review, our first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? Shipping, shipping, shipping. This is more shipping in hindsight. Mm, I see. Well, what can I say? I don't know if it's intentionally setting up for the last episode, but it's kind of funny to see. This episode was a lot of fun, but it's mostly visual spectacle. Like uh, in other episodes, we can talk at length about how the characters interacted. This is more just what the two characters create on screen so it's fun but i'm not sure gonna get to talk as much about the episode's content all right all right and tara what about you well first impressions i really enjoyed it and i can't help but feel like this they have a lesson in this episode that is actually very relatable to some people in real life but i'll go into full details at the uh near the end when we get full details (laughs) all all right and as for me this episode was a lot of fun I'm not a huge fan of Pinkie Pie episodes just because Pinkie's never been my favorite character. But this episode, eh, it was okay. I like it a lot. Uh, (laughs) Weird Al really did his role well, so yay, much fun on that one. But anywho, those are my thoughts. So yeah, if you have not watched this episode, pause here and go watch. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the episode. So, well, we start off the episode with... Rainbow Dash flying to the castle of friendship. Uh, she's in a dizzy or panic. Uh, she got a message from Pinkie Pie saying that uh, meet at the castle ASAP. And well, she does, she does. And she announced that, hey guys, look at this. It's a cupcake. And said cupcake is a message or invitation from Cheese Sandwich to visit his uh, factory. Yay, much awesomeness. One of the few reasons why she's excited and why she's kind of, well, uh, how to put this, wanting to see Cheese is because that she feels like she has no purpose in life. Because, well, she points out things like, well, um, Twilight is going to be uh, the new ruler of Equestria, Rainbow Dash is going to be uh, Wonderbolt, and then we got Fluttershy with her pet sanctuary. Rarity has her three boutiques. While Applejack has her hat. And also her farm. Yes, her farm. So she has two things going for her. While she has nothing. So somehow she discovers or she just wants to go and meet up with Chi. So she can, well, find out what she's going to do. Her life's purpose and whatnot. So I'm going to pause here, and Silver, what do you think? First off, Applejack has more than just a hat. <laughs> she, has, she has a lasso. Ah, no, not anymore. What? What do you mean, not anymore? When was the last time did you see her use it? When was the last time you saw one of these ponies use the toilet? Does it mean they don't do it? Do they even use toilets nowadays? Uh, she used an outhouse two. in the last roundup. Yep. Yeah, that was like way back in season one, I believe. Two. I'm just saying that... Season two, yes. I'm just saying, just because you don't see it used right away doesn't mean it's not there. But uh, I just love that she smiled more contently when when Pinky clarified the farm. It's like, oh, yes, the farm. Mine. Mine. Oh, boys. Okay, I like this development for Pinky because for the longest time, they've had all these characters going through transitions. And Pinky's mostly been the cheering section. Or the comedic relief. She hasn't really gotten to do a lot of introspection in a while. And ju- like I say, just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not there. So she's been asking these questions and maybe comparing herself, which, you know, comparison is the thief of joy. 
I think she's in for a lesson, but not the one she thinks. Though I do appreciate that she's asking these questions. I guess you call him a philosopher named Eckhart Tolle. He talks a lot about misinterpreting form with purpose. That we tend to define ourselves by the titles we have, uh, the things we own, the people with whom we associate. It's always form, and form is transitory. Rainbow Dash is a Wonderbolt, but one day she'll retire. Well, same for all of them, really. Though Twilight will probably retire much later than the others. Eh, true that. So these forms are transitory, but who they are and the growth they had, that's something different. That's something that lasts. So it's good for her to, to be asking these questions, but she is going to uh, find a different answer than she expects. And I do like that when Twilight says, "You only you can discover it, she's like, I know. That's why I'm going to someone else to ask, to ask them to help me find it. <laughs> That's all I've got for the moment. Also, yes, the ponies do need to learn to look behind more often. See, when, they, when she says like that, well, actually, if you think about it, thankfully she didn't say that while she had a long mane, not all fluffy. Oh, yeah, Pink Amina, Diane Pye. I have cupcakes for everyone. <laughs> Such lovely cupcakes. <laughs> oh, no. And Tara, what about you? Well, uh, being that I think this is the last Pinkie Pie episode, like at least an episode focusing on Pinky, I do love how they address like Pinky saying, you know, Twilight's going to rule the kingdom and, you know, everyone has their own job. And then Pinky's just wondering, what am I going to do? And what's my life's purpose? And I like how they put more focus onto that and showing that they're all growing and they all have their own life's purpose now. And I mean, Applejack's got two, which, you know, bonus for her because she's got her hat plus the farm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I do like how they're addressing all this. And even though Twilight's like, you got to fight it for yourself. And Pinky's like, I know. That's why I'm going to ask someone to help me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. That's all I got so far. All right, then. So, anyway, uh, moving on. So, in the next scene, we see Pinkie Pie, well, instant transmissioning to uh, Cheese's factory. And she is stopped by two guards. The security guard or security pony asks Pinky, what are you doing here? Nobody gets in or out. And that's troubling somehow. I don't know. I'm just I'm just seeing movie references. No one gets in to see the wizard. <laughs> ah yes. I knew that this episode has somehow um called out to like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and whatnot. Yes, and also Meet the Robinsons. Ah yes, I remember that one. But anywho, carrying on. So let was say, uh, da, 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 da. yes, uh, Pinkie Pie sh- says that she has an invitation from Cheese and she gets into the factory. And this really reminds me of uh, Charlie or was it? Uh, it's pretty much both. Willy Wonka and Charlie at the chocolate factory. Yeah, see, confusing. But anywho. Uh, Although it does... Sorry, but it does seem a bit dark how before she enters, the security guards are like, no pony gets in and no pony gets out. It's like, what is this, a jail cell? And that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Ooh, maybe it's Thunderdome, the factory. <laughs> oh, are you trying to be spoony? <laughs> two, po- two ponies enter, one pony leaves. Oh, God. Anywho, <laughs> Anywho um, Pinky gets into the factory and suddenly is greeted by Cheese that has a blue coat at the back. What? Oh, no, no, no. That's not Cheese. This is uh, Sandsmirk, the quote-unquote protagonist for the show. Hmm. It's confirmed. Sans has made his way into MLP. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> I don't know. All he's his missing present- is that one blue eye. Honestly, I think his presentation's a little bone dry. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yes. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so, anywho, we are introduced to Sans. Yeah, I'm just going to call him Sans. So uh, we are introduced to Sans, and somehow Sans is the, uh, what was he introduced again? The manager, the assistant? I think he's the vice president. But yeah, something like that, right? Vice president? Uh, yeah, let's say, uh, uh, science, well, okay, whatever. vice president, let's go with that one. So he helps, she's running the factory and whatnot, and... Uh, at this point, 
it seems very strange. It feels like he's trying to manipulate cheese and whatnot. But anywho, um, there's a couple of ponies with sands and they're trying to collect data on stuff. Okay, no problem, no problem. That, by the way, his his title is Vice President of Amusement Integration. Ah, all right. Thank you, Silva. So anyway, we enter the factory and Pinkie Pie was hoping to see fun for all, but oh no, it's just a normal factory where they box things up and whatnot. And Sans here just shows products to Pinkie Pie, like the squirting flower. Oh, yay. Uh, don't, don't give the joker that. Yep. Yep. And Sans just asks, Pinky, uh, so how would you make this thing funny? And she says, okay, what, what if you attach the flower to a uh, coat and instead of the flower, the coat squirts out water and whatnot. And uh, this is just going to be the formula for a few bit because Sans asks Pinky her opinion on some jokes and whatnot and she tries to improve it or just give them ideas on how things could be funny and whatnot. And Pinkie Pie just keeps asking, like, where is Cheese? I want to go see him. So they meet Cheese and, oh my god, Cheese is Steve Jobs? Are they saying Steve Jobs was without laughter? I don't know, man. Because I thought the documentary did that. <laughs> but anywho, it's revealed that Cheese has lost his laughter and whatnot. And it's kind of, well, a boring person he lost his laughter and whatnot and yeah he's done for so i'm just gonna pause here so what do you guys think uh Tara? well i do like how well, i mean the moment picky enters the factory i had a little bit of deja vu because back then when i was young uh, my mom got me into her place where she works at a chocolate factory. And, you know, me being young, I'm thinking, ooh, is it going to be like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and this and that? And then you look and it's like nothing but conveyor belts and people just stand there and do nothing and be like, oh, okay. <laughs> but I also like, too, how there's a little, little bit of a twist because, like I said uh, so many times, I like when something surprises me. Like when I first saw uh, Sans, I thought, you know, he's the bad guy and uh, he's controlling cheese, and it just turns out cheese is just sad. But you know, maybe there's more to it. Maybe Sans is just using him or something like that. We may never know until we get later on in the episode. <laughs> yeah, get Elfield to work on it. And Silver, what about you? Well, getting to see the the products they're manufacturing. I mean, a banana peel that goes out of its way. It's like a blue turtle shell, <laughs> only only a banana. It's not my shell. <laughs> what? So there, there, there's funny, a lot of funny slapstick in all of this, which is just uh, enjoyable. And you get to see Pinky, they're setting up that Pinky is an expert on humor. Uh, until we get, geez, I've lost my laugh. <gasps> Dramatic reveal, commercial break. Dun, dun, dun. But yeah, they're saying Steve Jobs lost his humor. <laughs> oh. But... Uh, but honestly, the biggest joke is Apple integration. It doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boys. But you want to use this product with an Apple? <laughs> Sorry. We're proprietary. <laughs> well, from why I heard the new version. Yeah, you know what? Not going to defend. Not going to defend. And here's the thing. I, like you both, I, I suspected maybe Sans was an antagonist. Or, you know, manipulating cheese or, or no one leaves this factory. So it's kind of got the sweatshop <laughs> fear. It's kind of funny how this episode plays with expectations. And maybe that's the best uh, that's the best humor. But I'm getting ahead of myself. You know, it's fun to see the factory. But again, I, it's more spectacle than substance. Mostly it's just re affirming that Pinky knows humor. And well, that's always been a thing. She makes people laugh. And so it was cheese. But anywho, or, so, or cry, or cry. I mean, let's be honest. Pinky's had some real stinkers in the past as well. True that, true that. <clears throat> anywho, uh, I'm going to carry on. So Cheese tells his story about how when he travels with Boneless Two, and they meet up with uh, the ponies, and Cheese always um, creates stuff for ponies, like uh, specific stuff. Uh, when he was at a party, uh, he introduced a piñata to a pony. And instead of the 
piñata breaking is the bat that broke and gave out candy. And people enjoy it so much that he starts creating a lot of other things like Joy Buzzer, Tin Can, blah, blah, blah. The, the list goes on. And now here comes Sans, uh, becoming his business partner and whatnot, telling him or suggesting him to build a factory. And so they did. And as time goes on, Cheese has lost his laugh and realized that he doesn't, he can't laugh anymore. Oh no. And Pinky here is going to help her, sorry, help Cheese get his laugh back. So I think what, there's phases in this plan. And the first phase is physical humor. And you know what? Me telling this is going to be boring. So I'm just going to ask you people at home to go watch this for yourself because it's, it will be it'll be, it'll be me just saying, oh, Pinky put glasses on. Oh, funny. Pinky shakes Sans' hand and electrocutes him. Ah, <laughs> funny. And Pinky file falls on pie. Yay. It'll be something like that. So, yeah, you go go see for yourself. Well, you could have fun with it. You could have fun lying to the audience. Pinky tries a buzzer. She shocks... Uh... Sands into fried bacon. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> it's attempted murder. <laughs> no! Attempted murder. How do you get bacon from a pony? Find out on this week's episode. No, 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 no. No, not with Copa around. No. <laughs> Norman, I believe that saying this was intended for children sailed a long time ago Oof. when you brought me on board. <laughs> I thought I, that sailed long when James was on. Yeah, well. <laughs> But anywho, but anywho, um, there's three phrases. Uh, second one, smile. The third one is the science of comedy, which is pretty interesting. Uh, the logic here is if one thing plus one thing makes you laugh, why not combine them together to make a third thing that makes you laugh? And it kind of works, I guess. I don't, I don't know if you can ever express humor in so scientific a method. Yeah, but this one, uh, one of the pranks, the bucket on the head thing, that that made me giggle. Like, you were expecting water to fall down, but no, it was the mat that um, shoots out water. <laughs> that, that was good. Now, see, it may be funny to you, but to me, I see it as, you know, your nose is going to start stinging from all the water coming up your nose. <laughs> <laughs> like Silver mentioned, uh, joy in the pain of others. <laughs> yes, yes. Sing for me your symphony of tears. <clears throat> you know what? That's actually true. I agree with that because, you know, I'm sure Silver remembers the time where he mentioned his great blue balls at uh, <laughs> Brony Con. Someone almost choked on his food. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah. That was one of my fondest memories of that event. <laughs> oh, so, anywho, I'm just going to skip uh, audience at home. I hope you go watch it because it's a lot of fun. So... Pinkie Pie just says, okay, uh, we've done everything from physical comedy to prop to whatever it is. Like, there is a lot. And Cheese is not laughing. And this worries him. And Sans thinks that, okay, if she's not having the ability to laugh, uh, the factory has to shut down. And he thanks Pinkie for trying to make Cheese laugh, but it seems impossible. And he says a few things that struck Pinkie Pie's idea and she goes up to Cheese and tells him his life purpose and whatnot. And that is uh, he finds joy when he gets to see others laugh at his jokes or pranks or whatever it is. And him being in the factory not being able to see it makes him well not being able to laugh. So Pinkie Pie meets up with Cheese and Ask him to at least give it a shot. Try. See how. And he tells a joke. And uh, he, well, he tells a joke to Sans. And Sans says, ah, oh, yes, uh, very clever. He doesn't laugh because, well, have you guys ever noticed that Sans here is a bit like a mod? Maybe that's why Pinky gets along with him so well. <laughs> yeah, I know. If if Mudbriar weren't on the scene, maybe we'd have a different ship set sailing. Uh, true that, true that. Wait, wait. Take Sans to Marble Pie. Uh, see, see if she gets along with him. She needs a she needs a rebound. Marble. What about Lime? Oh God, I would I wouldn't subject any stallion to that. <laughs> uh, plus, I think more uh, limestone is still hurt with the shipment of Big Mac and um, Sugar Bell. 
I think uh, it was marble. I mean, no, not marble. Um, what? Yes, marble. Wait, ah, I'm getting them all mixed up. So many pies. <laughs> <laughs> so many pies. Mm. But anywho, um, mm. I'm going to carry on. So Cheese just says, yeah, not not working. And Pinkie Pie says, try a joke on me. And uh, do you have the transcript out, Silver? Uh, yep, one sec. Let's see here. <laughs> We're done. You can't make me laugh. I do love that Sans says, sir, you can't just surrender. At the end of the day, he really does want Cheese to succeed. So let's see here. So you're looking for the wordplay? Yes. Pinky, you'll laugh at everything. I appreciate we're doing. But I think it's a cost loss. <laughs> a, a, a lost cause. And that gets a snicker. And with that, Cheese just realized something. And like, uh, in a normal situation when someone makes a mistake especially when the boss does and one of your workers like oh you're in big trouble but in this scenario oh no like this kind of is the epiphany for cheese to well find his laughter again and start up a song <laughs> and I, I like this song I, I, I like this song it's not as great as the previous one that he sang but still great it's Weird Al. I mean, he puts such energy into his song. Yeah, and the thing is, he doesn't write this song. It's all on... Um, I forgot the name of... Oh, man, how can I forgot the name of person who writes songs? Remember, Silver? Oh, and I've talked to him at conventions, but you put me on the spot here. Yeah, I mean, to Daniel Ingram. <laughs> it, there we go. Yeah, Daniel Ingram wrote the song for this one, and yeah... Gee, it's right. <laughs> Where else just carries it? Like, yeah, awesomeness. <clears throat> so, Tara, well, okay, you know what? I'm going to pause here and ask for your guys' opinion on the song. So, Silver. Well, I agree that Weird Al adds great humor and energy to it. I won't say he carries it because that implies the lyrics are weak. But it's a great song with great lyrics and he, he has great energy. So, it all comes together. I agree that... Uh, how to put this? Up until now, Weird Al has been playing basically the opposite of himself. Humorless, low energy, depressed. This is the return of the cheese sandwich we celebrate. And I guess that's part of why a lot of this episode sort of passes by very quickly without a lot of uh, a lot of attention because we're waiting for the return of the cheese we know and celebrate. So getting to see this, uh, getting to see him running around just being super energetic is just great. And so it, it's sort of the culmination, the payoff. This, I think, is what most people will remember. Plus, he actually does get Sands to uh, have a good laugh. <laughs> true, 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 true. <laughs> and Tara, what about you? I really like the song. It's very catchy, very upbeat, and I like how it brings out Cheese's energy back from we when we first saw him, because at the, at the beginning of this episode, he's kind of upset, doesn't have a lot of laugh, but then once he starts getting it back, it's very catchy and upbeat, and it even makes you bounce around yourself, you know, getting into the groove. And even that one scene where the spotlight's the spotlight is on Cheese, and you see Pinky just floating by. It's like a music video almost, and I'm like, wow, that's actually pretty funny. And I actually had a few giggles off that scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the joke was not bad, too. The, the joke was, what was it again? Uh, what was it? Yeah, it's, uh, something good to, yeah. Hey, Sense, how did the... Sorry, um, how did the laughing bird's egg hatch? Did it crack up? Oh, uh, boy. Actually, it reminds me of a joke that, uh, funny enough, I heard from Power Rangers. <laughs> okay, go ahead. You got my interest. Cause, well, because, like, me and my... I forget how old I was back then, but me and my mom were just sitting around uh, on the couch and Power Rangers was on TV. And then the Power Rangers are talking to each other, and then they're like, why do seagulls not fly over the bay? And it's like, why? It's like, because if they'd flown over the bay, they would have been bagels. <laughs> <laughs> and then me and my mom are like, wow, it's so corny, but we still laughed at it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> wow, I've never seen Norman like this. No, 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 no. Oh. Wee! <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway. Oh, okay, with, with that, uh, she's got his laptop back and uh, and Sans is happy 
for that. Like he gets his left tail back and they can start working on the factory again. But Cheese turns him down and says that my life's purpose is all to be on the road, to make people laugh, to make ponies laugh and whatnot. And you work on the factory while I'll go around looking for new materials and I'll send it to you. Yay! It's, it, it really works well. And, well, Pinkie Pie says, that's great, I came here trying to look for my uh, life's purpose and whatnot, and Cheese kind of invites her along. And Pinkie says she's good, she she already knows her life's purpose, so that's that's awesome. But, hmm, that invitation, hmm. <laughs> that's right, I'll take you up on that later, big guy. <laughs> And then Pinkie Pie goes back to the castle of friendship and tells the story about how she helped Cheese and called them back to the castle. And then uh, <laughs> it's going to be repeating. So, yeah, they understand. And Pinkie just offers some um, brittle nut in a can. Yes. And confetti. With that, episode ends. So, um... Let's go to final thoughts and, well, opinions and stuff. So, Silver, what do you think? Well, a lot of the humor in this episode comes from a, a betrayed expectations or frustrated expectations. Everyone tells a joke and Cheese fails to react. And we're waiting for him to have that explosion of energy and it's just not there. And so you keep watching with sort of this giddy anticipation because, you know, it's it's keeping you in suspense. At least that's that's the theory. At the same time, it's kind of hard to then uh, say, oh, I love the humor in this scene or that scene, because, again, it's mostly the waiting. But if I can uh, draw it all together with another show I enjoy watching, uh, Kamen Rider Zero One. Zero? Is that, the main is that new? Mm -hmm. It's the current, uh, currently airing in Japan. The main character loves puns, and therefore he's the greatest character of all time. <laughs> so he is constantly making these puns, and then nobody laughs except for one character. Now, the hero has this uh, assistant lady, and she ex tries to explain the joke, <laughs> which is where the real hilarity sets in, as, as she's so straight-faced about it. And uh, the lead character, Aruto, is just like, no, don't explain the joke! <laughs> so I see a lot of that dynamic in with Sans and, well, Pinky and Cheese being a combination of Aruto's ro uh, role. So it's just fun to see, the, see these elements in play across media. So maybe there is no science to humor, but you can recognize some of the traits. Mm -hmm. True that, true that. But that's all I really got. All righty then. And what about you, Tara? Well, being as this is the last, this is the last Pinkie Pie episode. I really enjoyed it from beginning to end. I like the comedy, and I like how Cheese Sandwich was in here, even though he lost his laugh at the beginning. I liked how he still had a little bit of comedy in there, like when he said, uh, when he mentioned boneless, and he's like, "Even boneless doesn't recognize me." And you see the chair just turn. <laughs> it's like, whoa, whoa, what? Yeah, <laughs> he's got a good laugh out of that. But I also like too how it kind of i wouldn't say it messed with us but it was like it gave us the old switcheroo like how we all th probably thought sans was the bad guy and how he corrupted cheese and stuff like that but then like silver said earlier how he's like you can't close down the shop you, this and that but like he's ba basically on cheese's side it's like okay he's not the bad guy he's just trying to help him out and you know giving him some support and then in the end when cheese decides to la help him laugh and he's like you're gonna run the factory and then i'll just send you the ideas while he's out uh, making ponies laugh and then you know pinky finds her purpose that her and cheese are kind of the exact same they like seeing ponies smile and i like that and it's kind of like and this is what i was taught this i'm gonna come into the part now where it's kind of like um real life like before brony con where you know silver said uh he's gonna toss his great balls and stuff like that mm -hmm. and then once it actually happened at brony con which you can also see the video on my channel once it happened as he was throwing his um this is gonna sound weird, but as he was throwing his balls at me, <laughs> <laughs> everyone was gathering around. They all started giggling and laughing, and you know that, that's great to see in this community. <laughs> see? Oh, boys. <clears throat> yeah, that's all. That's awesome. That's all, that's really awesome. And as for me, I I like this episode a lot. Oh, sorry, um, I I always say that it's 
I, I like this episode and I like Weird L and the song was really good and see I, I feel like this episode is just good but one of the few things that it's hard for me to explain or just tell people that it's great and whatnot is just that it requires you to go watch it. It it has a lot of physical humor. Like like the the example of uh the well, physical humor where Pinkie Pie just says, Oh, is there something in my eye? Like how do we as reviewers portray that? It's kind of hard. And yeah, it, it, it it's not easy. But overall this episode was a lot of fun. And in terms of character development, we, we get to see the sprinkles of love, one might say. But hey, um, that's for a future thing. So yeah, probably we'll talk more about that in that segment later on. But yeah, overall... Oh dear. Uh, why? What? Pinky could start a whole line of romantic-themed party goods. Sprinkles of love. <laughs> Oh man, you know what? No. So anyway, who uh it, those those were my thoughts, yes. So anywho, uh Silver, what are we gonna do next week? Well, it's time to switch gears because we are going to revisit Little Witch Academia. And we are going to talk about uh the fifth episode of the series in which there be dragons. Ha 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 Dragon. Dragon, dragon. Rock the dragon, ha. Yeah. yeah, we'll be reviewing Pact of the Dragon. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, okay. So uh, that's the name of the episode. No, no. See, because I have the wiki up, and it says Luna Nova and the White Dragon. See, yeah. But on Netflix, it says Pact of the Dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, this is just gonna throw off my game. But anyway, yeah. Uh, we'll we'll be reviewing that and all that one. Also, and that one is also a Patreon sponsored video. So. If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thembshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on the Twitter under MLP Silver Quill. You can also find me on DeviantArt under the same name. Uh, the community has generously offered its support on Patreon and Kofi under, well, Silver Quill. And as a you can always find me on YouTube. Just type in Silver Quill or After the Fact, and I shall appear. And on Wednesdays, you can catch me posting comic reviews and editorials on Equestria Daily. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And Tara, what about you? Well, they can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortera1324. And they can also search me up on Patreon, where if the good people would like to, they could donate some money to me. Awesome. And also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Master of Lag, Tristan and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much, guys. You guys are great. So, anyway, I have been Ron Sanzo. I am Zisir Vakwil. And I am Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode on the BS show. See ya. Sprinkles of love. Run away! I have a joke. What do you cross? An owl and a bungee cord. What? My butt! <laughs> this is where we play the cricket noise. No one! I, I think the crickets are about to shoot themselves. <laughs> crickets, no! Norman, what have you done? Uh, I don't know. <laughs>